Hey there everybody, Matt Carter here. And Jessica Carter here. This video is our This Is Us reaction to Season 4, Episode 17. And just in case you needed a good cry, I, I this episode is here for you. I It's it's an incredible episode. It, it, it is difficult. I mean, there were moments that it was really hard to watch it because it was so, so painful. And I... I'll say from the jump here that I kind of wondered going into this whether or not it was really necessary. Should we have a what if episode like this at this point in the season's run? But now that I have seen it and I understand where it was going, I do think it was necessary and it brought us to a very interesting place entering the finale. Before we dive in though, if you do like this discussion, remember to give us a like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any other updates. Before we get too started, I'll just apologize before we go yeah. too far that my voice is a little bit hoarse in this video. So sorry about that, guys, but I didn't want to miss out on the discussion. Yeah, we, we will press onward and uh, we will have as good of a time as we can discussing an episode that probably made us all want to sob uncontrollably, but... They did a really good job mirroring these two different timelines of sort of the perfect scenario that Randall thought it would be in his head and everything that would go right. And then this other scenario where finally the therapist called him out and was like, okay, listen, so in your scenario, everybody's happy, you're curing cancer. Okay, so now tell me what your biggest fears are. And that was the part of the episode that really got me bad and just crushed my heart. It was so unbelievably sad, but you know what? And as hard as it was to watch things like Randall be estranged from his mother and William not really care about him in this sort of alternate reality proposed to his therapist. It was necessary, I think, for Randall to hear those things because Randall, he lives in Randall land sometimes. And I, I, I understand wanting him, him wanting to live in Randall land. Like, I, I have certainly lived in Matt land here and there in my day. I'm sure there's a Jessica land. Everybody has that land. No, I like to live in Randall land because this <laughs> okay. land seems like the best one. We all really want. Yeah, <laughs> apparently in Randall land, everything works out well for everyone at all times. And, and he's cured cancer. Yeah, and he, yeah, he can cure disease and make sure that Rebecca doesn't lose her memory. And I... I it makes sense for Randall and, by the way, to be like that. Because this is how Randall would think. He would think that he is the Superman that can do everything. And if nothing works out to his expectations, of course Randall is going to blame himself for it. Yeah, there was that that alternate reality watching... The, the part that really got me the worst, I mean, there was some bad stuff like watching William shut him out, watching Randall throw William's box into the garbage, all of the seeing that he was estranged also from his brother and his sister, like everything went sideways. Seeing that fight with Rebecca and Jack and then seeing Jack only see one side of it and only see Randall's side of it and basically put Rebecca in the cold. And I saw him kind of feeding into Randall's anger about being so upset with Rebecca about everything that was going on. And that's the part that hurt me the most because... Jack had the ability to stop Randall from hurting and hurting and hurting. And as the years were going on, Jack was still kind of feeding little bits of this anger into Randall and he was continuing to bring it throughout his life. I think so much of this episode speaks to <laughs> the idea of you know, butterfly effects. I mean, there's even a whole movie called The Butterfly Effect. It is the whole, you know, if one thing changes, everything changes after the fact. And I, I think everything within this episode sort, sort of speaks to this idea that Randall is who Randall is because of everything that Randall has gone through. And yeah, I think everyone wants to have this sort of perfect imaginary world where they can say, and do everything to their own specifications, but life just doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. And I mean, 
it was very interesting to have the therapist finally call it out and say, listen, in both of your fantasies, they both start the same, which is with your mother holding this secret. So really, this isn't about could you have saved William? Could you have saved Jack? What would the future be with them? It is really about these feelings that you're holding on to your mom and how she kept this secret and you guys never really had it out the way that it needed to be had out and so to see him still continue to not have it out with her and basically be like listen i've lost three parents my birth mother's dead both my dads are dead all i have left is my mom I don't know how much time I have left with her. I don't want to spend it doing this and continuing to like make her feel a certain way or make it worse on her while she's losing her memory that these are the last ones she's going to have with me. So it was a good realization for Randall and it was a powerful choice for him to choose to not put his last moments and last, you know, who long, who knows how long mm -hmm. with his mom being in more turmoil. It was a big decision that he made. And it was also just, I love the <laughs> twist in this episode because I think so much when you think about twists, you think about, oh my gosh, I'm screaming at the television. My jaw's on, but it's like, this is sort of a, a natural twist where Randall has been spending the majority of his time thinking about, one issue as the root of the problem and it's never really been just about that it is here is this other issue that sort of lays unresolved and you're sort of looking at jack as sort of a way to cover up for that on some level <coughs> and i think ultimately for randall the decision that he makes and it's a powerful one it's one that's probably going to have its fair share of consequences from here and i'm sure we'll talk more about that over the coming days is just him deciding that rather than have a conversation with Rebecca that dives fully into unresolved feelings, it is, I have done so much for you. I have been a good son. He said that repeatedly. Here is what I need you to do for me. I need you to go to this trial. I need you to do this because I can't live the rest of my life having these same regrets like I do with Jack. Yeah, and with William and with his mom and like that he has lost all these people in his life and this is his only parent that's left. And I understand wanting her to at least try to go through this and it was such a heartbreaking moment watching Rebecca even say yes because she's not doing this for her. She's not doing this for anyone else in the family. She is only doing this for Randall and having her look over and see her family and everyone's together and laughing in these these last memories i mean nine months is a is a long time when you're at this stage of alzheimer's i mean the, these are months and she's never ever going to be able to get back and i I get why he wants her to do this, but the unfortunate truth of Alzheimer's is that there is no cure and there is no way to stop this. So yes, it's a clinical trial. Maybe there's a possible cure in this, but right now there isn't. So she is giving up a, something very valuable that she really can't get back for him. And that's what I think the real feud is going to end up being about, that Kevin is going to feel just also robbed of these moments because that means that it's not just Rebecca that's not having these moments anymore. Kate doesn't get them. Randall also doesn't get them. Kevin doesn't get them. Miguel doesn't get them. They're all gone for everybody. I think that is where the real kind of intrigue comes after this because I think... <coughs> Rebecca knows that when she's having that conversation with Randall, that she knows her saying yes to this is going to mean problems with Kevin. She already knows how Kevin feels about all of this. And she recognizes this is going to be hugely problematic. This is going to probably cause a lot of chaos in this family. But I still need to do this for Randall because I need to care for him. And if this is the only way that I can care for him... I'm going to do it. Now, I still think there's going to be a lot of questions that all of us on the outside have about this. I mean, is this way too much for Randall to ask of her? Even if 
this is sort of his own map to inner peace. Is there another way? Could he have found something else to try to find this rather than asking his mother to go through this? I mean, I, there's always another way to go about things, but if he really feels that after losing three parents that he can't lose another without saying something, then he needed to say something. Now, it's always still up to Rebecca on if she decides to actually go through with it or not. Yes, there's a lot of pressure. She does have two other children and a husband to think about as well. And yeah. everybody's decisions and everybody's feelings on this, plus her own feelings on this. But I don't think that Randall, in the way that he, this time around, the first time around, and the way that he was dealing with it, and the way he was trying to push her into doing it, that wasn't the right way to go about it. This is something that's a little more raw and very honest of where he's coming from because now he's actually tapped into those feelings and he knows why this is happening and where it's coming from and what he can handle and what he can't handle. He, If he's not going to have that her other hard conversation where he tells her how much resentment or what whatever it is he feels and that he needs to be able to get through keeping that secret from him he does need to say what he needs to say now while he can and if rebecca had still said no i don't think randall was going to be like well goodbye then i mean he would have found a way through it here to me is the another really hard part of all this is that we know that if if <laughs> Rebecca does go through to these trials, we know they don't work. Like, we know we've seen her in the flash forwards already, and so that may just end up causing even more anger. And we don't know if, well, it seems like maybe Kevin and Randall have resolved things deep in the future, but that may just be because they feel like Rebecca's on her deathbed at that point, and they feel like they may have to. We just don't know actually how long this feud potentially could last, but... Well, we also don't know how close they even are anymore. I mean, we haven't really seen the two of them together in the future. Like, Randall's at his house, sure. Yeah. Uh, but that's where Rebecca seems to be living. So if she's on her deathbed, Randall's going to be there to be with her, whether Kevin's there or not. So... We don't really know where these two are landing. How, like, how long does this feud go on for? Is it still going on in the future? It's a lot to take in right now, but I, at least I think it is very clear now what causes the feud. I don't think there's any ambiguity there anymore. I think it's very, very clear, and it makes sense. And that's always been sort of the thing with this show, is that if they were going to do something that just ripped out our hearts to this degree... It needed to actually mean make enough sense that two people who were as close as Kevin and Randall were would actually not want to talk to each other. And I do think that finally we've gotten there. I'm just glad that they didn't end up showing us a scene of Jack sitting beside the bed with uh, Rebecca. No. I just, I wasn't going to be able to handle that. They already threw in enough things that I wasn't able to really process yeah. that while watching Randall throw that box in the garbage. That was awful. Just seeing Jack continue to fuel Randall's fire of resentment and anger towards Rebecca and years and years going by. And that idea that Randall would have not forgiven his mom for like, what would that have been? 25 years, you know, like 40 years. Like it's a, it was so horrible to watch yeah. i mean even the first part of it i was like okay this is a you know i understand this is all rose-colored glasses everything is amazing william doesn't have cancer he's got both his dads he's got his mom everything yeah. is okay like they've gotten through it together that was all right and then i had to put my hard hat on because yeah, this was brutal but we can i think say this I mean, we've kind of, I feel like we've complimented Sterling a lot in these videos already, but those final scenes, like, I know you're not going to want to give him the Emmy again or give him any love because it's a network show and it's been on for a few years, but it's like, how do you not nominate him after that? No, <sighs> I know. It's true. And I mean, even just him in that alternate universe where he's playing a guy who 
has no love. He's fractured from his family. Yeah. He's got women coming and going. He's completely closed off. Seeing a Randall that is completely closed off to feelings was so weird. Yeah. And I'm sure it was probably in some ways just more interesting for him to play because he hasn't played a Randall that is like this, yeah. that is closed off, that doesn't want to let anybody in. He's, you know, sleeping with one of his teacher's assistants for two years. And she's like, this is the first time I've ever like heard anything about your family. Like yeah. he's clearly so closed off. And I mean, in that, even in the bad alternate universe, at least Kate was happy. She's with some, some guy named Ethan's got a little girl, a little boy. Everything seemed like they were going really well for her. And then we got Kevin. Kevin's still with Sophie. So, I mean, things are working out for everybody else, but they're yeah. not working out for Randall. And they clearly weren't working out for Jack and Rebecca either. Yeah, I, I, I think this episode, it teaches us something about <clears throat> looking back, about ripple effects, about how it's good to hold memories close, but sometimes... It can be difficult to sort of have your rose-colored glasses because something is inevitably going to stain them or crush them, and then ultimately it's never what you once thought. I thought this was a really, really good episode, and we only have one left, and then the season is over. Why you gotta say things like that, man? Well, we gotta pre prepare everyone. This is it is difficult, but we will have discussions coming up on the finale. But for now. Let us know what you thought about this as uh, Season 4, Episode 17 in the comments. And if you did enjoy this discussion, give us a like, subscribe, and you can support us further by checking the link in the description to the store. And we'll see you here next time.